This Finnish love metal band is known for its melancholic poetry. Hi, I'm Maya Fear, and welcome to WatchMojo.com. And today we're speaking with Ville from him. So tell us the origin story of him. I'll tell you a short version. Uh, I grew up with Miguel, a bass player, and Linda, a guitar player, with school friends. So I've known them since I've been eight or nine. When we had the tough decision of uh, figuring out whether we want to study something and become uh, responsible adults, we thought that uh, that's our last chance to form a band when we were approximately 14 years old. And that's when him was formed. So I know that you guys came out and said that you hate when journalists ask you what genre you are. So you invented love, uh, love metal. That was a boring answer, I think. You know, because it's one of the things. You know, musicians always. I think that to become a musician, you have to, you have to uh, say that you hate genres and you hate pigeonholing and, and, you know, it's like those classic answers. So how would you define love metal? On this new album, for me, love metal stood as the middle ground between the cult and Depeche Mode. So it's the more sentimental, usually considered the more feminine aspects. That is not considered to be part of rock and roll. Rock and roll is usually really macho. It's really like boss to the balls and kind of used to be uh, chauvinistic and misogynist as well. We appreciate our mothers so much that we never wanted that to be part of our vocabulary, musical vocabulary. So we wanted to have rock and roll that mothers could enjoy. <laughs> it's, it's easier said than done, man. Do you think the band's music has evolved from album to album? We grow older, and uh, when you grow older, you grow more tired. And when you grow more tired, you want to concentrate on the essential, because you know that you're not going to have energy to do it all. So you just want to concentrate on the good things. Uh, so your new album, Screamworks, what was your influence for this album? I was uh, suffering quietly in solitude while starting to work on the album, and then I kind of fell head over heels for somebody while writing songs, which obviously poured into the tracks. So there's a lot of hope, and there's a lot of falling in love on the album, which is nice. Would you call yourself a huge romantic? Romantic in the very original sense of the word. I'm more of a romantic than a, sci uh, you know, than a scientist. I do believe in emotions and the power of emotions and rather than just the binary code. It's not just ones and zeros. In magical thinking, yes, but not like candlelit dinners. Not bad. It wastes space and time and money. From the heart so black and blue, only for you. So one striking thing about him is your logo. I've actually heard that the heartogram is more well known than the music itself. So what does this symbolize to you? It symbolizes all my experiences, all of our band's experiences, all of our friends' experiences. So it symbolizes my life in general, I think. It's a thing I drew down on the day I turned 20, so 13 years ago, that Margera. He's a big, big fan of, uh, of our band, and uh, so he's been using the symbol all over the place. So a lot of kids know it from his TV series rather than knowing our music. And it's great. It's fabulous. It's miraculous to see it etched on somebody's skin and knowing that it's just something I doodled down ages ago. How would you say that staying sober has affected your music? Well, I was spending more time working on it. And then, you know, my pronunciation was a bit better in the studio. We didn't have to cut so many just, just, just slurring S's away. But I do miss the days of getting all messed up. I mi miss it dearly. But, uh, but the problem is that, you know, we're a touring rock band. And maybe back in the day, it was part of the deal to be as messed up um, as possible. But these days, people expect to play some music and to play well. So I can't multitask. I can't do them both. You know, maybe they could be a tour of just getting messed up. 
It's like, come see him drink on stage. <laughs> Something like that. That, that'd be a great tour. So on that note, we will end it there, and it was a pleasure to talk to you. On that weirdly distorted, but yet ominously beautiful note. Yes, we can end it here. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>